Nina Williams gunned down in her own home. Loved ones and friends are still trying to make sense of the tragedy. Meanwhile, her alleged killer, Jonathan Robinson, faces first-degree murder. But with a long and violent criminal past, KSLA Chief Investigative Reporter Stacy Cameron tells us some people are asking why Robinson was out of prison and free in the first place. In the wake of the horror and the heartache of April 12, 2018, the day Renita Williams, a mother of three small children, was shot and killed, her murder streamed live on Facebook, a portrait of her suspected killer, Jonathan Robinson, quickly emerged. According to court records, he's a violent felon who served more than 10 years in prison for aggravated battery and robbery. But as I examined his rap sheet, a criminal history spanning 19 years, one case stood out. On the last day of July 2014 in the Allendale neighborhood of Shreveport, narcotics officers set their sights on this house after getting tips from neighbors that Jonathan Robinson and his brother were allegedly selling drugs here. According to an investigative report, the Robinson brothers and another man were sitting on this porch when officers arrived. A quick search of the area turned up drugs, cash, and a gun and all three men were arrested for possession with intent to distribute crack cocaine. For his part in the alleged crime, Robinson faced a minimum of five years hard labor if convicted, but it turns out he never faced that drug charge in court. Wanting to know why, I filed a public records request with the district attorney's office. Reviewing the criminal file, I discovered a legal fight over $3,000 froze the case for nearly two years, with prosecutors finally dismissing the charges in 2017 without explanation. Criminal cases generally shouldn't last that long. Jay Florence is a criminal lawyer hired to represent the man arrested alongside the Robinson brothers. Looking back, Florence says the case never got on a normal track. It was a case that could have and should have ended. Again, this is just my judgment, no more than six months. Because the court appointed a corporate lawyer to defend Robinson, not a criminal attorney. Something, he says, happened a lot back in 2014 because the Cattle Parish Public Defender's Office was going broke. Facing too many cases and not enough cash, Florence says court started assigning lawyers with no criminal experience to represent defendants for free which he says became a big problem. To say the person's not qualified, it's not, it's not a disrespect to them, it's, it's just a reality, it's not what they do. Because some civil attorneys who didn't want to defend criminal clients found ways to get out of unwanted assignments like filing motions to delay the cases. So a lot of the civil lawyers, they did come in and filed all kinds of motions um, attempting to go all the way to the Supreme Court to again delay, to make the point that, hey, we're not qualified, you need to take us off these cases. In the Robinson drug case, I found one motion that brought everything to a standstill for almost two years. You see, the court-appointed corporate lawyer wanted $3,000 to initiate an investigation. But when both the local and state public defender's offices said they didn't have the funds, Robinson's lawyer filed a motion to stay the case. Which basically means everything is frozen. My client and I objected because we, our argument was, hey, we're ready to proceed, we're ready to go forward, we're ready to try this case to prove that my client is innocent, but we had to wait. Starting with the trial court, then the court of appeal here in Shreveport, Robinson's attorney took the battle for $3,000 all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, losing each time. Still practicing with a prominent Shreveport law firm, I tried emailing and calling the attorney this is Stacy Cameron with KSLA. Wanting to talk about the case, but my messages went unanswered. We punish the criminals. Uh, we catch them, and they, you know, if if they committed the crime and they don't have a good defense, they go to jail. Ken Levy is a professor of criminal law at LSU. He reviewed the case. He had a, a long rap sheet, and my understanding is not much of a defense to the, the latest crimes that he was uh, being uh, charged with. He probably would have gone to jail for a long time. And told me the motion, arguing for $3,000, clearly put the brakes on the case. If the defense had been given enough money to fund the case, he probably would have been prosecuted, convicted, and in jail. While Robinson's lawyer never got the money for an investigation, it didn't matter in the end. 
because in March of 2017, the district attorney's office dismissed the drug case, a move that completely surprised Florence because he didn't expect prosecutors to drop the case once Robinson's lawyer lost his motion. You didn't expect this case to be dismissed? No, I was expecting for me and my client to go to trial and for us to win a trial. And that would have been the same with the other two defendants. You expected those cases to go to trial or a plea bargain somewhere. And whatever the result be, would be, correct. With the case almost three years old in 2017, Florence thinks the DA's office finally decided to cut its losses and walk away from it when one of the defendants, Robinson's brother, not my client, one of the other individuals, got convicted on separate drug charges in Texas, meaning Robinson and Florence's client were off the hook. Because this case had been stayed and floating around in our court system for so long, it was just easier for the prosecutor at this time to dismiss the case and be done with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, no prosecutor came and told me that, but I would be foolish to believe that's not what happened. In fact, reviewing the case file, I discovered a note reading, due order of dismissal on all defendant doing 25 years in Texas. But during an exclusive interview... That case started more than a year and a half before I got here. Cattle Parish District Attorney James Stewart explained why the drug charges against Robinson went away. It was a constructive possession case. And in a constructive possession case, the loss is mere presence around either drugs or around someone else is not necessarily constructive possession. According to the arresting officer's report in the case, police didn't find any drugs on Robinson, and the crack recovered at the scene was underneath a doghouse next door to the house where Robinson was sitting on the porch. This case was dismissed because it wasn't a prosecutable case, and one of the other defendants was convicted somewhere else. So it's one of those cases, the only way you'll get a conviction is if the defendant pleads, okay? And the defendants did not plead, and it was time to make a decision on the case, and it wasn't prosecutable. Thirteen months after the dismissal of prosecution was filed, Renita Williams was shot and killed in her own home. While Robinson now faces first-degree murder charges and the death penalty, Professor Levy says Williams' death is a tragedy criminal justice should have prevented. He should have been punished much more severely for many of his crimes. He should have been in jail. It's worked out for the defendant, but it didn't work out for society. The murder case against Robinson goes back to court on Monday, but money is once again delaying his prosecution. Due to funding cuts, there's a lack of public defenders qualified to try death penalty cases here in northwest Louisiana. So right now, Robinson doesn't have an attorney who can defend his case at trial. I'll be in the courtroom next week and keep you updated on what happens. For now, I'm KSLA Chief Investigative Reporter Stacey Cannon. And if you would like to see Stacey's full interview with Caddo Parish...